Okay, uh, very good morning. Can you hear me? Can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay so today we have uh, two chapters to cover. Uh, very short uh, chapters. It's only six page. Okay, so because basically we already learn most of the stuff in pneumatic side. Okay, so hydraulic is just a replicate of it. Uh, so we will see some important elements of basic hydraulic circuit. Okay, so this will be the last chapter, chapter 10. Okay, and we will have some additional info for your understanding. Okay, so I will discuss on that as well. Okay, so today will be the last lecture for the subject. Okay, so after this, uh, all the lecture periods we will use for uh, other assessments. Okay, so we uh, we still doing uh, CA ass assignments. Uh, I think I already gave, and uh, we also have uh, quiz. Okay, we will use all these empty slots uh, to cover it. Okay, uh, and as I said, we have a lab four. So I already changed the lab module. Okay, because uh, the previous lab module for lab four uh, is for face to face, face to face uh, session. Okay, where you need to have the hydraulic unit in front of you for you to do that. Yeah, so we cannot like control a lot of stuff. Okay, so I already changed it to a fluid sim version of uh, simulation. Okay, so that you can do at your uh, own, okay, uh, using your laptop. Okay, so uh, we will go to the today's lecture. Okay, so basic hydraulic circuit. Okay, so basic hydraulic circuit. Okay, so as you, you all know, so the basic hydraulic circuit will look like this. Okay, so we'll have a supply unit. Okay, or we call it as a power unit. Okay, it will be in a box. Okay, we'll have a motor, you have a pump, and you have a pressure relief valve, you have a tank, you have a pressure gauge. So in your hydraulic fluid same, you can get this whole thing as one sim uh, one symbol. Okay, so you just go and select, you don't need to like uh, select one by one. Okay, all will be in the box. Okay, then you have uh, pressure relief valve. So you have two. So normally this is for the hydraulic unit, okay, supply unit. And you'll have uh, one outside, the one that you uh, normally will control. Okay, normally will control. Okay, then you have a valve. Okay, so directional control valve. You have a tank. Okay, uh, all the extra oil must be channeled back to the tank. Then you have uh, hydraulic cylinders, okay, or hydraulic motors. Okay, so in your lab module, you will see uh, one is cylinder, one more is a rotary motor. But one thing is, you cannot really see the motor rotating, but you can get the value of top, okay, when you adjust the uh, the, the uh, parameters. Okay, so this is basically uh, what is consists in basic hydraulic circuit. Okay, so control of a single acting hydraulic cylinder. Okay, so single acting, you know. So inside the cylinder, you'll have a spring, and it's only at one port. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. So only the extension will be based on uh, hydraulic and the return based on mechanical which is the spring okay so you can see when you it will be in a initial condition where no connection so it your cylinder will be at the back so once you push this button uh, sorry not button the end lever okay so it's a manual actuation uh, the valve will change sequence and hydraulic oil will enter inside and extend the cylinder so once you release this, so here you have a spring, it will shift back to here 
and your the hydraulic supply will be cut off and your cylinder will break right so this is a control for single acting hydraulic cylinder okay so about the control you have uh, learned more on the pneumatic side so is actually the same actually the same okay so the name naming of the valve a two position a two position three ways three ways three pot Okay, manual actuator, okay, manual actuation, and spring offset. Okay, spring offset, direction control valve. Then you have a double acting hydraulic cylinder. Okay, so double acting. So normally, it will be controlled by the port. <coughs> so you can use 4 over 3 like here, or 4 over 2. So it uh, depends on you. Okay, so I think in the lab, I gave you... Uh, some tasks for you to <coughs> uh, switch between 4 over 3 and 4 over 2 and to see how things work <coughs> okay so here uh, both side you have end levers okay so here you have your supply unit okay so when you switch here the cylinder will extend and when you switch to this side, the cylinder will retract. So both are activated by N lever. Okay, so this is how you control a double acting uh, cylinder. So both side you need to supply hydraulic. Okay, hydraulic for for it to extend or retract. Okay, then there there are some modification that can be done for your hydraulic circuit. Okay, so like this, gener regenerative cylinder. Okay, so you can see based on the construction, it's all the same. Okay, so you have uh, two end lever. Okay, but if you see here, one working pot is blocked, meaning no supply, uh, no input or output. Okay, and only one side is used to extend the cylinder. Okay, and when the hydraulic oil enters here the hydraulic oil on the other side will go out okay normally this side will go back to the valve before go to the tank but in a regenerative cylinder the the uh, how to say uh, retraction sorry um, the, the output Output of the cylinder will be directly connected to the uh, tank without passing by. So when you don't pass by the valve, so meaning lesser process, a lesser process. So because you already bypass, okay. That's why they say here uh, bypass. Okay, so we read some of the info. So pressurized fluid discharge return to system. Uh, fluid discharge. Okay, so return to the system. Okay, speed up extending speed. Okay, so extending, uh, you can increase the speed of the extending because uh, this part is not going back to the valve. So if more process, uh, extending will be uh, slower. Okay, so retraction bypass, a regeneration circuit can double the extension speed of a single rod cylinder without using a larger pump. Uh, so normally we will go through the valve and you will increase the capacity of the pump uh, meaning you supply more so uh, you increase the speed by supplying more but by doing this uh, you don't need to use a larger pump uh, so still the speed of the extension will be fast uh, without you using larger pump or you use the same pump it did this mean the regeneration circuit save money because smaller pump motor and tank can produce the desired cycle time so it also means that the circuit costs less to operate over the life of the machine uh, meaning so if you go to industry and they only give you very less money to buy to develop the system uh, then you can consider this so here you can still use a smaller pump. Okay, when you use smaller pump, smaller motor, and also tank, so meaning uh, you you don't need to buy expensive one. Nah. 
okay so it can be within the budget okay but it will still give the same result the desired cycle time desired cycle time means uh, the the working time lah. okay so if you want the cylinder to extend within 10 seconds uh, so it can be achieved by doing this okay so that is what we call as a regenerative cylinder okay then we have also cylinder synchronizing circuit okay so sorry for the circuit uh, it's at the sideways okay uh, because it's from the book Okay, cylinder synchronizing circuit meaning okay to, to uh, put it in uh, own word okay so this is your supply unit and you have a direction control valve and you have two cylinders okay, so if you see here when the hydraulic oil enters here okay so this cylinder will start to extend it will start to extend and the oil in this part will go out and extends another cylinder uh, so that's why we call it as a synchronizing so meaning uh, one the output of one cylinder will become input of the second cylinder okay only after the second cylinder it will go back to the wall so that is what we call as a synchronizing cylinder uh, so you, you just apply to one and it will control the other one okay so pump pressure should overcome load acting on both cylinder uh, meaning but for this you need to have uh, a stronger uh, pump a stronger pump because indirectly you are controlling two cylinders a two cylinder so uh, you need to supply because this side you have a load okay, a force acting to uh, acting uh, towards it okay so you need to have a pump that can control two cylinders okay so that's for chapter 10 so any question okay very short chapter so i just discuss uh, the important part of the circuit so the rest you can just use the same like uh, pneumatic uh, sir yes can we use a cylinder synchronizing circuit in uh, pneumatics? Yes, can. Oh, okay. No, no problem. You can use it uh, in uh, either way. Even electron pneumatic also you can use. It's just a process. Process of using one output as an input. Uh, sir. Yes. The pressure loading position, right, is means by the middle position or the left hand right. Uh, which one? Uh, pressure loading position. Pressure loading position. So where is it? Oh, no, no. This one is in the left one. Okay. Yes. So pressure loading position. Uh, pressure loading uh, normally on the, uh, for, for the cylinder to extend. Okay, so normally cylinder to extend will be on the left hand side, right? So you are loading yeah. a pressure for for the cylinder to extend. You are applying a pressure to the cylinder area for it to extend. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, so any other question? Okay, so if no question, so I will shift to the second circuit, uh, second lecture. Okay, so we have a few more points to discuss. Okay, please hold on. Okay, so this additional information. This is more on the comparison between hydraulic and pneumatic. So it's not in the syllabus but i think uh, there are some questions coming related to comparison between hydraulic and also pneumatic so i just include this so i already uploaded in google classroom so you can download it okay so it will be under chapter 10. okay so we will see some differences okay the first one 
Okay, so differences in the symbol. So what are the uh, big differences between both pneumatic and also hydraulic? So the first differences is based on the symbol. Okay, you see uh, both circuits on pneumatic and also hydraulic look almost similar. Okay, nampak macam lebih kurang macam sama. Okay, but there are certain things that you can use to identify whether it is uh, pneumatic or is hydraulic. Okay, the first uh, differences is in the symbol. If you can see, so on the left hand side, so it is on the hydraulic. So hydraulic, the first thing, hydraulic, you using a symbol like this. So symbol like this is referring to hydraulic pump. Okay. So only hydraulic using pump. Uh, so pneumatic not using pump. Uh, pneumatic gunakan compressor. So it's using a compressor. Okay, and the symbol, you can see the triangle. So for hydraulic, it will be darkened. Okay, so uh, symbol segitiga ni dihitamkan. And for compressor, so it's uh, still remain white. Okay, so based on this, we know, okay, so this is referring to hydraulic pump. And this is referring to compressor. Okay, so when I ask to do a narrative or give asking you to give explanation, make sure you use the right term. Jangan uh, cakap pneumatic pump. So I minus mark because it's a wrong understanding. Okay, so don't say hydraulic compressor. Uh, so wrong. Okay, it shows that you don't understand it. Okay. So pumps and motors differs only by filling in the direction arrow or leaving it white. Uh, so either you're leaving it white for pneumatic or you fill the direction with color, uh, black color. Okay. So then the second one, okay, so this on the pump and also compressor, this on the valve. Okay, valve pun sama. Okay, so the pilot operated, uh, so pilot arrows, Okay, so must be dark. Okay, and the input. Okay, the supply. Uh, supply pun dark. Okay, so we know this is a hydraulic. Okay, so hydraulically actuated and supplied 3 over 2 pilot spring. Okay, so pilot spring. Okay, so you boleh bagi nama lah. Okay. For pneumatic, symbol of the valve the same. Just the differences is no no color uh, or you make it white, leave it white. Okay, and the supply white and got exhaust. The uh, Cassidy, yeah, ten. Uh, so if you draw like this and you itamkan uh, uh, the arrow uh, downwards, uh, so that's a wrong concept. I minus one. Okay, the Cassidy, jangan letter ten. Uh, so wrong concept also. Okay, so make sure. So the the idea that I am trying to say. Make sure you know what you are drawing in the design. Yeah, I see some of the assignments. Uh, so quite sad lah. Okay, so because I need to minus mark. Okay, for some of you lah, uh, who use the uh, wrong symbols. Okay, so exam also like the same. Okay, so the second one, differences in symbol. Okay, cylinders and other actuators also differs with respect to supply and direction arrow. Uh, so cylinders. Uh, cylinder pun dia ada dua port. Okay, so double acting cylinder. So if you have port, make sure you darken it for hydraulic and uh, leave it uh, white for uh, pneumatic. So we know. It's a hydraulic cylinder and this is a pneumatic cylinder. So even though the symbols are uh, same, almost the same, but the construction are a bit different. Okay, because both are using different fluid. Okay, so many symbols do not change. For example, the filter symbol. Okay, so hydraulic filter symbol is this and pneumatic filter symbol is this. Okay, both nampa sama. Okay, both same. Okay, but if you see, remember however that the physical construction is completely different because it's using a different fluid. 
so hydraulic using hydraulic uh, oil and pneumatic using a uh, compressed air uh, so kamu tahu lah uh, compressed air you can just really so maybe the filtration uh, is uh, different you need to filter the dust you need to filter the air particles uh, so that's the nature so this filter is based on the nature of the compressor what you want to filter okay so you need to have some imagination okay in uh, hydraulic oil so normally you will have a uh, dust inside okay maybe a dirt uh, or maybe a corrosion part uh, so something like that okay so you need to have a uh, proper construction uh, so you need to understand that even though the symbols are the same but the physical construction is completely different for both Okay, so you can see here some uh, so this is for compressed air the filter so this is for hydraulic okay for example hydraulic filters can be used can be either suction strainers suction side of the pump okay so you can have a strainer so pressure filter okay pressure side of the pump uh, you can use a pressure filter or return filter in the return tank line so all these are where you want to uh, put your filter okay so each filter requires different properties okay so basically what i need to tell you so you as an engineer must know uh, what uh, comp uh, the components that you want to use okay so what's the limitation what's the advantage what it can filter what it cannot filter so you must have some knowledge on that okay so hydraulic valve have a crossover to tank so crossover so this is hydraulic side and the exit exit must return to tank so kalau tak letak symbol ni saya letak minus mark yes i saw uh, some of your seniors they only put this they forgot to put this so minus mark Okay, so this subject is easier to mark because if you do mistake, I will just minus mark. Uh, so, if you don't want me to minus mark, so draw it uh, correctly. And I saw uh, something that, uh, how to say, I pantang tengok, right? Uh, so, people use free end. Okay, you need to understand this is not a drawing class. Uh, kalau drawing class, you boleh lah gunakan free end. Okay. Uh, so, I know maybe you have a lack, lack uh, of time. But still, use ruler uh, to draw the line, the wiring of the circuit. Uh, so, don't lose mark lah. Dekat -dekat. So, if you use free end, uh, so memang I cannot help you lah. Okay. So every time I say free end, I will minus one mark, one mark, one mark. Last last become negative. So I need to minus mark from the other question. Uh, so jangan macam tu. Okay, so make sure. Because I need to put all your answer sheet in file. Uh, so uh, auditors come and see. They say, ah, apa ni student? Metatronic diploma. So don't know how to even draw a professional circuit. So don't don't expect me to help you if you don't want to help yourself. So that's what I want to say. Okay, so here uh, all the uh, exit or the excess oil must be returned to tank in pneumatic. Uh, so pneumatic, uh, you can uh, just release it to the atmosphere because it's air. Okay, air and it's not harmful. So you no need to have a proper uh, cleaning before release. So no need because you just uh, for compressed air, it just gathers all the air in the surrounding, compress it, and use in the system. So when you have excess, uh, just release it back to the air. Uh, so your atmosphere uh, will just accept it. Okay. So pneumatic has an advantage on that side. Okay, so differences in medium. Okay, so medium I told you. So hydraulic uh, is using hydraulic oil and pneumatic using a compressed air. 
okay so hydraulic oil okay always imagine the oil in the car car brake okay brake brake you are the brake fluid okay so power steering you have a power steering oil so uh, your uh, autom automatic transmission you have a etf uh, automatic automotive trans transmission fluid okay uh, more more things more things here yeah, in different different cars okay so imagine hydraulic oil is the uh, same okay like how you are servicing every three to six months once you need to change the fluid even though you never use the car you need to change because it will be oxidized uh, so you can go back and it uh, tapi you park the kalua at higher temperature uh, to the sun uh, so it cause the oil after some time to be oxidized so that's why uh, when you go to service they will write that okay 5000 km or 3 months and because roughly they know in 3 months somehow the oil will be oxidized okay even though you never uh, drive you just start the car and leave it which like mco again start the car and leave it uh, so you need to service after some time okay because the oil will be oxidized so if oxidized what will happen uh, it will have tendency to form a water vapor so kalau uh, you have uh, oil and as well as water inside your system uh, so corrosion will happen cavitation will happen so many things i can i can blacku okay so you need to be very careful when you use the hydraulic system because oxidation can happen okay so hydraulic oil is hygroscopic so hygroscopic uh, meaning uh, you have uh, uh, how to say you have uh, some properties some uh, chemical properties that can keep it um viscous okay so viscous so you have um, uh, hygroscopic uh, hydraulic oil okay so hydraulic fluid is viscous the viscous maksudnya liquid okay because of the chemical properties and the friction okay so and can be various type with varying viscosities um, so viscous you measure based on viscosity kelikatan okay so you can have various type uh, additive lah additive you ada banyak 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 bunda lah uh, some of the hydraulic oil is flame retardant uh, so flame maksudnya uh, tak mudah terbakar okay so when i say flame retardant meaning the hydraulic fluid is having a higher flash point uh, flash point maksudnya uh, titik mula terbakar okay the uh, flash point is the point where the fire starts so kalau temperature dia i so 200 degrees uh, meaning the environment must reach 200 degrees then only the fire will start uh, but when you have for more properties uh, so meaning the oil will be more expensive uh, so let's say the normal oil is 60 ringgit uh, don't have all these things So if you want to have a flame retardant, maybe the cost will be double. Uh, so if you want flame retardant and mineral oil, uh, maybe triple. Uh, so you need to, if you willing to spend more to get all these things, uh, so uh, you will, you can just buy it uh, based on uh, by giving more money lah. Okay. So even the car also synthetic oil. Uh, yang ni kita biasa dengar lah synthetic, semi synthetic, normal oil uh, so you can uh, have a lot of stuff lah ok so uh, so hydraulic fluid also can have additive additive meaning tambahan ok so antioxidants uh, like I said earlier uh, so oxidized as high temperature so you letak antioxidant uh, so you, you, you don't oxidize okay because you already your hydraulic fluid already have antioxidants inside okay lubricity uh, improvement uh, it will improve the viscosity 
Okay, anti-foaming additive. Uh, foam, I say last time. Uh, uh, foam akan hasilkan uh, water bubble. Okay, or water bubble will hasilkan uh, foam. Uh, after some time, it will arm your system. Uh, so when you put anti-foaming additive, they can put check out all the molecules. Okay, so that it will go back to the tank and it will be released to the uh, environment. Okay, or filtered. Okay, then you have an anti-wear additive. So this is for to prevent friction wear and tear in the system. Okay, so all this we call it as an additive. The additive meaning is not necessary, but you can have it at the extra cost. Which add on lah, yani. Okay. So you also can have like uh, anti-freezing, okay, anti-freezing additive. Uh, so foreign cars, uh, especially in the cold countries, they are going to get anti-freezing additive, okay, in their oil. Okay, air can hold moisture, which can turn into condensation at the dew point. Yeah, uh, to hydraulic, uh, pneumatic. Okay, so when when the temperature is very cold, you can hold moisture uh, and condensation will happen. So when condensation happen, uh, so water will be in the system, so which can cause uh, some problem. Okay, pneumatic component must remove the condensation from the air and provide lubrication. Uh, so condensation can uh, yeah, uh, cause corrosion. Okay, correct. Uh, so you need to provide lubrication. So hydraulic you don't need because it's already oil. So one of the advantage of hydraulic, memang digunakan oil, so you don't need to have a further lubricate, uh, lubricant inside, pelincir. Okay, but in pneumatic, you need to provide certain level of lubrication. Okay, so kita ada FRL unit. A filter regulator lubrication. So lubricator, they can uh, introduce certain part of a uh, certain amount of oil in the system, uh, so that they uh, are correct. Okay, so no correction happen. So air is safe under a wide range of operating temperature. Okay, so in terms of safety, uh, pneumatic is much better in terms of safety because uh, compressed air can be used in a wide range of operating temperature. Uh, meaning different different temperature also it can be used. Okay, unlike hydraulic, uh, hydraulic is okay. Just you need to make sure you control certain parameters uh, using certain mechanisms. Uh, then it will be fine. Okay, so comparison between pneumatic and also hydraulic. Okay, pneumatic system rely on supply of compressed air. Uh, so I think mostly you, you already know a lot. I just uh, highlight an important part. The, uh, the first thing is pneumatic gunakan compressed air. So it's using a compressed air. And pneumatic using pipe. So this term. Okay, so don't say pneumatic using os. Os is only for hydraulic. Okay, the terms. Uh, so pneumatic kita gunakan macam if you see in mechatronic system design lab. So you have a blue color pipe. Okay, the pipe is a nylon pipe. So nanti I can tunjuk lah gambar dia. Okay, so you need to understand pneumatic using pipe. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, so you are using uh, F equals to PA. Okay, so you are using uh, F equals to PA. Both also using the same. Okay, force equals to pressure times area. Okay, area of the actuators. And air is compressible. Okay. Uh, so, uh, udara, you tangkap sikit. So, you reduce the volume, it already became, uh, become uh, compressed. Uh, so, air is compressible. Okay. But, oil is considered incompressible. Uh, sebab dia bukan macam angin. So, angin the molecules, the distance between molecule is higher, so you have more space for you to compress it. But oil 
uh, we consider it incompressible. Okay, so we we cannot say uh, compressed hydraulic oil. Probably. Uh, so it's more like a incompressible. Okay, the comparison and uh, pneumatic using a gas laws such as uh, Boyle's and Charles law. Okay, so Boyle's and Charles Charles law. So it's uh, utilizing a volume. Uh, any and you budget the cat to move you. Okay, so here we just apply it. Okay, and for hydraulic we are using Bernoulli's. Bernoulli's and fluid flow law. Uh, we learn in thermofluid also. Okay, so law spoon uh, different. Any more to put again, it's more to put liquid. Okay, so actuator demand is measured in meter cube per hour. Okay, for pneumatic we calculate uh, all the flow based on meter cube per hour. Okay, while in hydraulic we are measuring using liters per minute. LPM, okay, liters per minute. Okay, so compressor output is measured in meter cube per hour. We are delivering any extra. Lah. Okay, so pump output is measured in liter per minute. Okay, both hydraulic and pneumatics are described with Pascal's law and F equals to PA. Okay, both, even though the medium and also the laws involved are different. But it fulfills Pascal's law and also F equals to PA. Okay, just the scales for hydraulic and pneumatics are different. Uh, the working range. Uh, well, to hydraulic, we always use for every load. So uh, pneumatic also because the working pressures are not the same. But both using Pascal's law and also Force equal, uh, equals to pressure times area. Okay, so the differences in pressure and force, uh, any yang uh, bagi tahu tadi. So, pneumatic, so the produce uh, force is up to, uh, produce pressure is up to 10 bar. And normally, we use it between 0 to 6 bar. Okay, that's our working pressure. Okay, maximum selalunya 10 bar. Okay, and it can go up to 5 kg, uh, 5,000 kg, uh, to maximum now, because I think you still remember, we have uh, multiple cylinder, uh, multiple, multiple cylinder concept, uh, so they are the banyak benda, so uh, the, the more complex the cylinder, so the, it can withstand more force, uh, so pneumatic generally can go up to Maximum 5,000 kg. Okay. So, uh, it depends on the setup. And for hydraulic, uh, so generally, you produce and use around 200 to 400 bar. So, year 10 bar, year 200 to 400. So, meaning, this system, it, it can use for a force more than 20,000. Uh, sorry, 20 times. 20 times to 40 times uh, compared to pneumatic. Okay, and it can use for forces thousands of tons. Uh, yani lima ton. Uh, 5,000 kg is 5 ton. So this is thousands of tons. So that's why we see most of the heavy machine are using hydraulic. Okay, earth movers, so construction, crane. Uh, the crane, the Kaplabuan. Okay, at the port. So you can carry the containers. Thousands of tons. So inside with load so already full still can carry uh, because hydraulics can be used for thousands of them and is using f equals to pa okay so the same thing okay so area of the cylinder and the pressure so generating the force okay construction yani you tell some part thing on so i don't know whether you saw in metal Mechatronic system design lab, but we have all these things there. But we just are simple lah, naguna, because of uh, this COVID. Okay, so uh, if you see, so this is the uh, hydraulic, hydraulic side, and this is the pneumatic side. The hydraulic power pack, uh, semua ni kita panggil as power pack. 
uh, meaning all the things that con uh, considered in the power element, uh, sorry, not power element, this is supposed to be supply. Uh, supply, eh? Okay, so we get the power pack, like so the supply power. Okay, so contains the pump. So you have a pump. Okay, uh, you have a pump, you have a uh, tank. Okay, tank. So we call it as a reservoir. So you have a filter. Okay, so you have a pressure relief valve. Okay, so all these are considered as one unit. So this unit is usually local to the machine that is using it. So local to the machine meaning is attached to the system. So if you think of the MSD lab, so you have the hydraulic unit. So that's why we call it as a local. It's not in other place. Okay, so it's uh, near to the system. Hydraulic pumps are usually positive displacement device, which means they displace all the oils they pump. Uh, so they are okay, pumps. So it displaces all the oil. Okay, so this is uh, on the construction. Okay, and for the pneumatic, so pneumatic, uh, I say, uh, earlier, uh, we are using a compressor. Okay, pneumatic compressor installation usually includes a dryer. So, the line is the dryer. Okay, so to dry the air. Okay, and receiver. Okay, so the unit is usually remote from the machine that is using it. So, pneumatic, I think, one place, the system, uh, maybe the compress, uh, compress, uh, Unit compressor uh, is in the other side, other part of the building. Uh, so uh, it, it, it no need to be together with the system. Okay, as long you have the pipe onto some boom can to the system. Okay, it is sufficient. Okay, so in terms of valve and also actuators, so you can see, uh, so thing open the number much different. Uh, yeah, Nibu added the lab, both added the lab. Okay, so pneumatic valve and actuators are generally a light construction as they uh, need to deal with pressure up to maximum 10 bar. Uh, so normally, Yani yeah, is just a normal stainless steel, so very, very light. So you just uncut, you will pass on. Okay, and also the construction here also is not so complicated. So it's, uh, we consider, call it as a light construction uh, because it's only operating um, maximum 10 bars. Okay, the cost of these components is cheap when compared to much more heavily constructed hydraulic component. Okay, it's not only because of the construction. Uh, when you are dealing with uh, heavy load, uh, so let's say thousands of tons, so you cannot use a very light material. So even you are using stainless steel, it must be a good quality. So when quality is involved, costs are kind of thingy. So that's why here it says pneumatic is much cheaper compared to hydraulic because hydraulic is using more material, better steel, better alloy, so, dalam tu pun dia kena mencetakan lah. If not, it will just rosak. Uh, it will just spoil. So, it won't fit the purpose lah. Okay, so, hydraulic valve and actuators are, are much more heavily constructed than pneumatic components. This is because the component must deal with pressure up to 400 plus bar. Uh, so, hydraulic actuators can be very large when compared to common pneumatic actuators. Uh, so it's not the same size, so it can be bigger. Yes. So hydraulic components are much more expensive than standard pneumatic component. Uh, standard hydraulic direction control valve in the region of hundreds of euro. So meaning this this thing, it can be hundreds of euro. Uh, euro currency. One euro pun already four point five above. Uh, so. Uh, thanks. 
hundreds of euros. So let's say is um, uh, is two hundred euro. Uh, so meaning it's already close to one thousand. Just but not only any, but yeah, it's it maybe it's just a uh, ten euro uh, or twenty euro. So baru start to sing it. So uh, that's the thing, lah. Uh, so you need to understand, okay, in terms of price. Uh, so these are the things that I told earlier. So differences in construction. Okay, hydraulic are using hose. Okay, so we can pipe. Uh, and while uh, pneumatic are using nylon pipe. Okay, so they are using nylon, nylon pipe. Okay, so even the fittings are different. Okay, so this is for pneumatic. Okay, so yeah, all these are for pneumatic actually. Okay, so they are the uh, what, what we call as a push fit. Okay, push fit. Ah, uh, warna biru ni. Ah, uh, you tekan ke dalam, you pasang nylon pipe. So dia takkan keluar kalau you lepas. So if you want to release this uh, nylon pipe, you need to push this uh, blue color button, and then you can take it up. Uh, itu yang kita panggil as push fit. Okay, so we have a push fit uh, connectors. Okay, but for hydraulic, you need to screw. So, macam ni, you can screw. So, that you won't come up. And uh, you can see, it's a, it can uh, constructed to all higher pressure. Okay, so higher pressure, uh, rubber hoses are still reinforced braided to strengthen them. Um, braided maksudnya, dia macam ada jala dalam tu. Okay, so we have a steel. Is steel in force. So inside you have, it's already made of steel, okay, or some high quality material. But inside you have a steel, okay, braided steel, in order to strengthen the pipe, with the hose. Okay, so you have a hose. The, the hose will be like this. So the connectors, uh, you just gonna screw. You just need to screw at the particular place. So this is your valve. Okay. Okay, differences in application. So when you can deal with various range of uh, pressures, okay, so like uh, pneumatic 10 bars maximum and hydraulic can go up to 400 bars. Okay, so automatically the application will be different uh, to where you want to use it. Okay, so hydraulic system are used where large force are required, such in the earth moving equipment. So, benda ni kita selalu tengok. So, always see around us. Uh, so, using fully hydraulic. Okay, so you can see hydraulic cylinders. Uh, you have hydraulic cylinder here. You have hydraulic cylinder here. So, full hydraulic system. Okay, full hydraulic. While it seems it's a mobile hydraulic, uh, so it has a very limited oil inside. Tapi dia boleh buat kerja. Okay, so you can do work. Okay, so you can use in the heavy earth, uh, earth moving machine, heavy cutting. Okay, so in the industry you can see hydraulically uh, operated uh, cutters. Okay, pressing, clamping, uh, all can be done. Uh, all, uh, hot press, cold press. So mostly are uh, using hydraulics. Okay. And for pneumatic, as uh, you see, the machines also a bit smaller. Okay, so normally production lines uh, they will use a pneumatic. Okay, in the industry, okay, so they will use a pneumatic system. Okay, where the out outdoor uh, working environment, so they will use uh, more on the hydraulic side. So pneumatic system are used for relatively light moving. Okay, so the normal machines. Okay, so you can see you have all the pipes connected. Okay, okay normally for packing, uh, so if you want to like normal bending, uh, small small stuff you can do using pneumatic system. Okay, so clamping and process operation. Process operation meaning like in the production line. 
Okay, so application. Okay, so lifting a car on a car ramp. Okay, so you can see at the old workshop. So you have a car ramp on the on-cut creator. Okay, so that's not required high speed. So you don't need to lift this car at the high speed. Uh, to moderate speed, on to go. Uh, and uh, you don't need a very clean environment. So, uh, so it's like a bit like open, exposed, pun uh, So, a large force are required to lift the car, uh, and car will be expensive, uh, will be heavy. So you cannot use a pneumatic to lift a car. Uh, so you need to have a large force. If this application is particularly suited to the use of hydraulic. So based on the working or the requirement. Uh, so what you want to do, you want to lift a heavy load. Uh, so you are, you don't need a uh, fast moving. Uh, so kalau macam tu, you boleh consider hydraulic. Okay, so you need, you need to decide. Okay, moving and light clamping of component is easily, cleanly and quickly achieved using a pneumatic control system. So if your application requires uh, moving and light clamping, uh, very, very light not not forceful of component uh, so clean uh, so clean because it's just using a uh, compressor so it can be released back to the air okay and it can achieve quickly with pneumatic are uh, much faster than hydraulic just not precise lah. okay so if you have this kind of thing uh, then you can use a pneumatic so industry you memang akan tengok benda ni Okay, especially electronic industry, uh, pharmaceutical industry, biomedical, uh, whatever industry. So we will always see uh, this kind of uh, machines, okay, which using a pneumatic. Okay, so uh, hydraulic. So how to relate the symbols and also the actual unit. Okay, so I told you earlier, so this is the pump. Okay, so this is the pump. So it's a Dakin. Okay, so if in the normal uh, physical, so this is the pump. Okay, then you have a filter. Okay, so this is the filter, the unit, the filter, the symbol is this. Now uh, this is the tank. Okay, so the tank. Okay, and you have a direction control valve. In actual life, so this is your direction control valve. It looks like this. It's connected to the pump, and this is connected to the actuator. So hydraulic actuator. So this is the hydraulic actuators. Uh, so all these things are available in our lab. Okay. So uh, So or if you are using an um, MSD lab. Then in future you bulletin or kablaka at the entrance. So you have a pneumatic and also hydraulic system. So where you can see all these things. Okay, available there. Okay, so this is for hydraulic and for pneumatic. Okay, pneumatic. Uh, so you have a compressor, you have a reservoir, you have uh, all the controllers. Okay, and you have a FRL. Okay, so this is your FRL unit. So filter, regulator, lubricator. The filter, regulator, and lubricator. So tiga tiga ni ada. Okay, so all three. And this is three over two direction control valve. Okay. So the push button. Okay, so you can see the exhaust. So it's just a release to the environment. Okay, and you have a 5 over 2, 5 over 2 direction control valve to control the double acting cylinder. Okay. And you have an actuator. This is the cylinder. So you can see all for pneumatic is not darkened. Symbol there. And it is not using a tank. It's using an exhaust. 
Okay, so that's all some of the additional information uh, which are required uh, for your understanding. Okay, so any question? So that's all I'm good. Anything yes. else? Uh, no, no question. Easy to understand. Okay. Okay. So I think um, you can just uh, read through all this info for your understanding before your OBE. So I think uh, with this we have concluded all the chapters. The total I consider eleven chapters lah. Uh, so although the last one is just additional info. Well, all the slides I already put in Google Classroom for you to refer. Okay, so the lectures we have uh, completed for now. Okay, all the lectures. Uh, so we just have a few more assessments to go. Okay, mostly I already gave. So next week we will do quiz two. Okay, so next week I will uh, arrange a time. And we have one more talk to go. Okay, so I need to discuss with uh, the speaker. Okay, maybe I will try to arrange next week as well. Okay, we are during the empty slots, okay, so that you can come and give some insight or uh, some info for you regarding pneumatic and also hydraulic in the system and uh, in the company, the industry. Okay, so that you can just relate whatever we studied with whatever info that you will give. And uh, for the talk, I will give a five percent. Assignment. Uh, assignment, uh, maybe it's just a question and answer. Okay, or uh, depends on its content. I haven't seen this uh, slide. Okay, based on that, uh, you have 5% uh, assignment okay, that you need to do. Uh, then you're already doing your CA assignment. Mm, what else? Uh, so lab, make sure you complete. So as I say, uh, the lab, uh, I already made the changes in the lab module because it's supposed to be for the physical lab, but we couldn't do. So I changed it, the, changed the lab module. And since I gave on Sunday, so you we will just have the demo session next week. Okay, so next week you can have whoever want to demo, you can demo lab four. Uh, then next week Friday you submit your lab report, uh, art copy. Okay, so I think that's all. Then be prepared for your open book exam. Okay, open book exam tentatively will be on tenth of May. Okay, another one month. So yes, sir. yeah, sir. yeah. Uh, the uh, the lab demo is the lab demo next week or this week? Next week, next week. I already gave this week schedule, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I Yeah, because I only gave the latest lab module on Sunday. So it won't be fair for me to ask you to demo this week, even though it's, it's easy. But since we have time, I just uh, let you all uh, do next week. Okay, Pon Usna also still marking your lab one, two, and three. So I think uh, it will be just nice if you can submit next week. Uh, so can I ask you something about the lab? Yeah. Uh, can, can let me present uh, so that uh, easier for me to ask. Okay, okay sure. Okay, so, uh, okay, so this one table, right? Yeah. Uh, Uh, this column cylinder inlet pressure and cylinder outlet pressure we just directly let's say this we put uh, 10 and then this we put two right okay and then we, uh, uh, I use this okay. and then we push so we just uh, use this value and yes this two you just value. take the two values uh, so the 58.99 is inlet pressure and outlet is 10. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and and then uh, the cylinder movement, uh, what we need to write. Yeah? 
so cylinder movement is uh, like extending or retracting. Oh, okay. Uh, so you just uh, choose either one. Okay. okay. Right. So when you, when you give a pressure, when you actuate it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. So any other question? Okay. Your CA assignment is okay. Can do. Uh, haven't seen. I haven't seen. Okay, so it's okay. So you have around two more weeks. So I think it will be a bit tough. A, a bit tough uh, because uh, it involves twelve cylinders uh, and it's a uh, electronic. So I hope you all can do la. Okay, spend some time. So don't do last minute, and you also need to do a video. Okay, of presentation. Okay, which carries 10 marks. So assignment 10 marks, uh, presentation 10 marks. Okay, which contribute 20% of your uh, CAA. Okay, so uh, please do. Okay, if you have question, you can just ask in the group. Okay, so I think that's all from me. I don't want to take a lot of your time. So we will meet next week for the lab session. So this week uh, we don't have anything else, okay? Unless you want uh, any uh, anything, and I will do a uh, exam clinic, okay? Maybe during the uh, last week, okay? So I'll just give you some tips, lah, okay, on uh, how to answer, okay, based on your midterm exam, okay? So midterm exam, I will return back some of your assessment. Okay, and I will I will give you all your carry marks. Okay, fifty percent. Give fifty percent. I won't give. Okay, so thank you. We will meet next week. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you